Welcome back to another episode of Seeker Psychology. Today we're going to talk about the very, very common problem of maxing out all the time. So this is a problem we see with a huge amount of athletes, a huge amount of different sports. To be honest, it happens more with the kind of strength sport athletes or the athletes that are based mainly in the gym because it's a lot easier for us to manipulate the intensity of our training. So if I have a, a rugby player, it's very, very difficult for them to constantly go too high with their intensity too much because if they're in season, they can't just find more rugby matches to go and play right they can go to the gym more often and do their kind of auxiliary training more but in terms of overdoing their sports specific stuff or overdoing their competition style events it's difficult for them to do right so in strength sports in gym based sports and in kind of longer distance or endurance sports sports where athletes are commonly left to their own devices this is a huge problem if you don't think this is a problem like if you don't think maxing out your squat every single week is an issue, uh, this isn't the video for you, and go and watch a different video. Okay, so we have the understanding now that, that this is a bad thing. Today, what we're gonna mainly talk about is why it might be occurring, right? A lot of the time we'll talk about why it's a bad thing, we might talk about the things that can happen when we do max out too often, the things that can happen when we uh, keep our intensity level too high for too long, but we very, very rarely look at why it might occur, why people might want to do it. So there's a number of reasons, right? The first reason we have is that people are afraid of losing touch with their their previous 1RM. So they're afraid if they go go away from that high intensity, they're going to lose their, their capacity to li lift big weights. They're going to lose their their 100 kilo snatch or their 200 kilo back squat, whatever it is. They're afraid it's taken so much time to get there. They're afraid it will go if they stop doing it. And it's kind of an understandable point of view, right? You might have trained for a year. You might have trained for four years to get to this level within the sport. And now you don't want to leave go of that. The very nature of, of training, the very nature of us manipulating our physiology and psychology is that it will go up and down. Our body will always fight to drag us back to homeostasis. Other factors in our life or other factors within sport are going to change our level of fitness at different points throughout the season or different points throughout the year. So just understand that it's normal to have the feeling of like, I don't want to lose this level of fitness, be that strength, speed, endurance, capacity, whatever it is, but it is going to happen anyway. So what you need to understand is if you pick a date, so if that date is in six months time, you want to be at this strength level at that date. There's obviously things we can do to maintain strength, but we don't have to constantly keep reaching up for one rep max numbers over and over again to ensure we stay there. They're much more sensible and much more uh, applicable maintenance methods. The second thing we see then is people want to know where they're at, right? So they might be training in a group training setting or they might be interacting with others or they might be following other athletes on social media and they're constantly thinking about where I am in relation to other people, where I am in relation to where I was last year, three years ago, whatever it is. What you need to start doing if you think this is the case is you need to start looking for alternative markers of success within training. So if we take the example of a max deadlift is going to fatigue me hugely for a prolonged period. You might have central nervous system fatigue lasting longer than 11 days after a max deadlift. You are also at higher uh, likelihoods of injury around these kind of max out sessions. So it's not an ideal way of me tracking how I'm doing. But if I am a weightlifter, if I am a powerlifter, whatever I might be, whatever my sport is, there has to be other ways for me to track how successful my training is. There has to be ways of me seeing, okay, what am I, am I in good shape at the moment? Or am I in bad shape at the moment? <clears throat> an example of this for a, an example of this for a weightlifter might be their current front squat number. It might be a, a certain complex that is very applicable to them. So a complex that might kind of target weaker areas and you might be able to see, okay, I was very bad at this complex four months ago. Now I can do it 20 kilos heavier. Now I can do it 40 kilos heavier. So although I haven't gone and tested a one rep max lift, I haven't absolutely maxed out. I understand that my other metrics are coming up in training 
And due to my kind of training history, my trust of a coach, my trust of a program, my trust of a, a process or a method, I understand that my one rep max is going to be higher. The third thing, or like the next thing in my list, is just going to be complete and utter boredom. There's some people get into endurance sports or speed and strength sports or power sports purely because they just like doing the thing. They might get a thrill from being under a heavy weight. You might get a thrill from running a certain distance. You might get a thrill from uh, running a certain speed. If that is the case, you're not well suited to do using this. <clears throat> if that is the case, that is not an ideal psychological prerequisite to being successful at this sport. So obviously there's a certain level of importance coming from how much you enjoy the sport. Like you're obviously not going to, to stick with it if you don't enjoy it. But you have to enjoy the process more than you have to enjoy the outcome. If we just enjoy the outcome, so if I just enjoy maximal snatches, then therefore I'm not actually training anything. Maximal, 100% intensity, 0% volume, doesn't really get you any benefits in terms of hypertrophy, in terms of strength, in terms of speed, in terms of power output, in terms of peak power output. None of these things improve when we just do max out sessions. And there's going to be people commenting on this video or people thinking about this saying, look, what about the Bulgarians? If you're dumb enough to think that you are going to be able to train in a similar method to what the Bulgarian system would have trained you to be, just this is the wrong place for you. Right. So we talked about it not being ideal as like a psychological prerequisite to just want to max out all the time and to look for the process. So if you are bored with with the normal training or the normal regime of training, the only thing you enjoy doing is maxing out, right? We've all been there. I've definitely been there for prolonged periods of time where I just want to lift heavy. That's all I want to do. Uh, you need to start looking at kind of alternative strategies for, okay, where am I going to glean enjoyment from? Where am I going to glean a sense of success from when I am not doing these maximal sessions? We spoke about certain complexes being used as a, a kind of marker of success or a marker of progress earlier. What I'm going to suggest here is using, in a very similar fashion, using these alternative markers of success and trying to bring about a sense of accomplishment through increasing our capacity with these, increasing our effectiveness with these, increasing our technique with these. So if you are a runner and the only thing you like doing is running your distance, right? So you might be a 1600 meter runner, you might be a whatever the distance is, and you know you're overtraining in your run, right? So you might have issues with repetitive strain injury. You might have issues with different kind of overuse injuries that are popping up all the time and you're told you need to cross train more right uh or this would happen with rowers this would happen with a huge amount of people you might not necessarily enjoy the cross training so what do you do then look for an alternative means of cross training like is there something out there that you will enjoy more if you're a runner and people are always telling you okay you have to do a certain mileage on the bike for your uh, out of season cross training but you hate being on the bike look for something you actually enjoy doing most of the time when it comes to a cross training or an accessory training utility, most of the time there's going to be a plethora of things we can use that will glean a very, very similar effect for us. So in that case, you have a bit more scope or a bit more range to kind of bring in some variance. The last thing then as a reason you might be maxing out all the time is not trusting the process. So the process in this case might be the the training system you're using, it might be the way you're coaching yourself, it might be the way your coach is coaching you, it might be the particular program you're following at the time, it might be the timeline of your program, right? But this happens all the time where someone might think, okay, I'm not going to be in good enough shape for the competition, I need to start maxing out now. I need to see where I am now because I don't trust the program. If you have an issue like that, and if those kind of voices are coming into your head and you're saying, geez, I'm not sure if I'm going to be in good enough shape. The first thing you need to do is start sharing that concern with the, the people who coach you. So if you have a coach, if you have somebody who writes your programs, if you just have a training partner you work with, start sharing those concerns. The best thing you can do in this situation is look for other people's input. So you need to start saying, okay, this is what I've done the last two weeks. Usually when I'm six weeks out from a competition, I am 
hitting X, Y, and Z for these numbers. Now I'm hitting A, B, and C. Seek somebody else's opinion. Get a more objective opinion on where you are. And the best person to give you this usually will be your coach. Your coach is has probably worked with you for a prolonged period. They've probably seen you in these periods before and they've probably addressed these concerns with you before. Obviously, if you're working with a coach, this can be a quite awkward conversation to have. Uh, Sorry, I I don't think I'm, I'm quite ready for the competition. I think you have done your job wrong and now I'm not in good shape. It's an awkward conversation to have, but you need to have that conversation immediately once you start having those concerns. Once you've had that conversation, and it, uh, if you're a coach listening to this or somebody, a, a training partner listening to this, and this is resonating with you that you've seen this in somebody else, a great place to go to then is to start talking through, okay, what is the plan? Most of the time people will receive a, a training plan and it will be like a black book, right? They put in their efforts, they don't really look at what happens on the inside, and then a result comes out. So they might get their program once a week, they might buy their program in a block, and they never look at the, the the overall grand scheme of things. They just see, okay, this is my session today, these are my sessions for this week, these are my sessions for this month. What you need to start doing if you are having those kind of concerns, and if you can see yourself deviating from the program in a way that's not productive, you need to start looking at, okay, what's happening with my squats, what's happening with my deadlifts, what's happening with my X, Y, and Z, and how am I going to be able to see progress in these? Now, if it's a thing where you look over the program and you can't make rhyme or reason of any of it, then there's an issue. That issue might be with you or that issue might be with the program, but it's very, very productive for you to actually look at the process and start kind of picking out those points, seeing where your variables are being manipulated. And a lot of the time we can draw some extra confidence from that. And once we understand the process, you might be a lot more inclined to actually stick to the process long term. So I hope this video resonated with you. I hope you've kind of spotted some things you might have seen in yourself. You might have seen it in people you coach or seen it in people you train with. If so, it'd be great if you could pop a comment down below, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, take a look at the Secret Trend Podcast. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you.